The National Football League Super Bowl is kind of a big deal. Do you know how many people watch the Super Bowl on TV? 98 million. Do you know how big that is? It's about the population of Vietnam. Fans pay $5,000 a ticket to attend in person. Advertisers pay $5.25 million for a 30-second commercial clip during the Super Bowl. But more than that, people are invested emotionally. Players have trained their whole life. Coaches, owners, and staff have dedicated their entire careers. Fans faithfully follow the teams through seasons of tumultuous defeat to seasons of glorious victory, all for the hope of winning the big game. So how do the organizers communicate the magnitude of meaning in a way that satisfies all of these expectations? With symbol with a Vince Lombardi trophy, with a ritual, the trophy ceremony, as well as the rituals of procession, coronation, and even veneration. Like in many religions, the NFL draws upon these ancient forms, what John Verbeke calls axial age technologies, to produce deep meaning and a sense of resolution at the end of the yearly NFL story. The trophy ceremony begins with a procession. Now, procession of sacred objects historically starts in location A and then moves to location B, where the ritual takes place. The clergy carry out a relic or an icon on a cart or holding it in their bosom. Complementary elements like flags, songs, and other symbolic items usually accompany the journey. One of the more epic processions today is the Velokoretsky procession of the cross, where 40,000 pilgrims walk 160 kilometers for five days following the icon of St. Nicolay the Wonder Worker. NFL dignitaries roll the trophy from the depths or the womb of the stadium. The relic remains next to the field, awaiting a champion to be decided. Now, the next ritual is coronation. One team emerges victorious over all the rest and is crowned champion. The stage rolls onto the center of the field, or really the field becomes a stage, and the trophy is bestowed to the leaders of the team by the commissioner or a high priest, if you will. Like Lady Liberty shining the light of freedom, the team's priesthood of leaders carry out the ritual of hoisting the trophy above their head for all of the individuals on stage and on the field below to see. This ritual is repeated year after year after year. The trophy's reflection is meant to capture the attention of all viewers and direct them to the highest point. Now, have you noticed the spatial symbolism here? At the base, we have the assistants and role players friends, employees, media personnel, which would comprise some sort of laity. The next level up is at the stage where the best players, the primary coaches and leaders, as well as the corporate dignitaries and, and owners stand. Then, of course, the pinnacle, the trophy is the top of the mountain, the, the point of transcendence. This represents the most important thing within this hierarchy more important than any individuals or any leaders, any motives or even aims. This hierarchy is reaffirmed year after year at the resolution of the season. This pattern is consistent in the church as well, where we have laity and piety and the object of transcendence, which would be for the cross, for example. The outskirts, the fans are in the periphery the background as mere observers. I'm not sure if the church has a position quite like this. Uh, perhaps this is unique to, to organizations formed primarily around entertainment. I'm not quite sure. Perhaps you could comment below and let me know what you think about this element of the, the periphery of observers. Note the procession doesn't stop after the Super Bowl because the trophy is transported to the hometown of the winning team where a parade ritual commences. Thousands of people crowd in person to be in proximity to the relic. Just really shows you the power of presence. 
that seeing the trophy on screen is not enough. It's why people build altars and cathedrals at the location of special moments and, and miraculous acts. It's because place matters. Presence draws you more closely to the power of special things and moments is, are elevated above time and the place that you're walking, the things that you're seeing, the rooms that you're in. It's like you were there when that moment was taking place. <laughs> Lastly, the ritual of veneration. Observe how people physically respond to the trophy. Some hug and kiss the trophy. Some stretch and, and touch it, just their hand on the trophy. Others strive to contact it, but fall short. People reach to touch the trophy like it's the hem of Jesus' garment or the staff of Moses or the Ark of the Covenant. And actually, similar to the Ark of the Covenant, which could not be touched lest you die, the Vince Lombardi trophy, before it is awarded to the victor, must be touched by people wearing white gloves. You have to wear white gloves if you're going to be touching this relic before it is awarded to the champion. This thing is packed with meaning. Modern materialist thinkers would reduce the trophy to, to mere matter. Obviously, people don't prostrate themselves for the sake of the collection of metal molecules. Nor do players kissing the trophy think about the material composition of silver. This is an act of worship. It's worth ship. They were demonstrating high value through acknowledged forms of rituals, like reaching and prostrating, kissing, lifting the relic above the head. These acts are often unconscious. We don't even think about them. They come quite naturally. And in a similar way, Christians act out rituals to demonstrate high value and what is most meaningful and most full of meaning. So what's happening here? Ritual, procession, symbolism, veneration, these are all things that are anything but archaic. Obviously, we depend upon these forms during our country's most watched moment on TV. The NFL is using these ancient methods, or what Verveke calls axial age technologies, to demonstrate the significance of its most sacred achievement. NFL organizers originally awarded the trophy in the winner's locker room, not on the field. They did it hidden almost. They realized that, I think, that fans and viewers needed a stronger connection and that the NFL players needed a higher form of celebration. So after Super Bowl 30, they incorporated these technologies to beef up the meaning. And here's the point, guys. These practices are anthropological. That is, they're a part of how humans interface reality and produce meaning especially so in large groups. In the absence of religious practice, though, these technologies don't just go away. They manifest nonetheless, and maybe even more so. It's what we do. It's what the NFL organizers and players and fans do. Christians also use these forms, too. Like how the trophy is to a team of individuals, the cross is to individuals within the church. They collectively celebrate what is the highest meaning or what is worth the most. That which transcends man and earth, that which is above individual perception, call it the ultimate reality. They celebrate the virtues and invisible forces that endure much longer than a single human life on earth, like love and the triumph of good over evil. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to stay up to date with what's happening on the channel. Uh, click the like button. Please leave comments below letting me know what you think. If you'd like to support financially, you can do so through the PayPal link below. Also, you can support by purchasing books as gifts to further the research. There's an Amazon wish list as well as a thriftstore.com wish list in the link below. Thank you so much for watching.